What are the things that could cause it? Bisphenols, perchlorates, sucralose, coffee, gluten cross-reactivity. These are very, very common things. Again, this is not, this is not intended to be an all-inclusive list of all the things that we know can cause low thyroid, but it's intended to give you some information that you can go have an intelligent conversation with your doctor and get deeper answers. So the next thing I want to talk to you about is I want to talk to you about nutritional. So autoimmune Autoimmune low thyroid is generally caused as a result of primary triggers. Those triggers are, as we said just now, chemicals. And these are not the only chemicals, but they're very common chemicals. Um, chemicals can cause it. Food can cause autoimmune disease, autoimmune thyroid disease. Microbial imbalance, back, abnormal bacteria, yeast overgrowth, things of that nature we know can cause autoimmune thyroid disease. And then the, the fourth trigger, which is more nutritional, um, meaning that it's, it's not necessarily going to trigger autoimmunity, but it is going to trigger low thyroid. So what's the difference? So if we look at nutritional thyroid, it's important to understand that um, in your brain, so I'm a, I'm a pretty terrible artist, so we're just going to draw a picture of a head here. Okay, so in your brain, you have your pituitary gland. And so in your pituitary gland, part of its job is to send a message to your thyroid gland. So the pituitary sends a message to your thyroid gland and asks your thyroid gland to produce T4. T4 is what I was talking about a moment ago. So the pituitary gland produces TSH. Thyroid stimulating hormone, and that that's again it does what it says it does. It stimulates your thyroid to produce thyroid hormone. T4 is inactive. The best analogy I can give you with this is that T4 is like having a Ferrari in your driveway without the keys to start it. It's really fancy, really fast, but it doesn't go anywhere unless you activate it. So the T4 has to be activated, and so we activate that T4 inside of our body by converting it to T3, although we can also make a substance called reverse T3. T3 is the active thyroid hormone. So this one is active. Reverse T3 is also inactive, doesn't work, doesn't do much for your metabolism. It has about one one thousandth of the activity as your active thyroid hormone. And once this happens, T3 is the active form that communicates to your cell. It communicates to the DNA inside of your cell. So it talks to your DNA through a receptor on the surface of your cell nucleus. And, uh, and so kind of the way this works. So again, this is why it's not as simple as your doctors made it out to be. Most doctors will measure this TSH. Docs measure TSH. And this is a lot of times how the, how the diagnosis is, is. If your TSH is high, okay, so if it's, if it's high, then they tell you you have low thyroid. If it's low, they tell you you have high thyroid. And, and again, TSH, the more of it you make, what that's saying is the more you make, the more you're trying to get your thyroid to stimulate the production of T4. That's why if it's measuring high, we say you have low thyroid hormone, okay? So it can get confusing, so I don't want you to get confused. But most doctors, this is all they'll measure. They'll measure TSH and they'll base the whole diagnosis on one element. Now, what I'm going to fill in is the gaps for you here because, I want you, again, I want you to be able to have an interactive, intelligent conversation if you've had this diagnosis so that you can, you know, so that you can push through without, um, without walking out of that office confused and on medicine for the rest of your life when it might not be necessary. So the TSH... In order for your body to be able to produce TSH and regulate the production of TSH, that requires vitamin B12. Okay, that's why nutrition. That's why I said nutritional. Is it autoimmune or is it nutritional? This is a nutrient. This is a nutrient your body can't sustain normal function without. You require vitamin B12 to produce TSH. You also require magnesium. Okay, so we need these two very critical nutrients to properly be able to manage the production of TSH. Now, once that happens, 
that TSH travels to the thyroid gland and it asks the thyroid gland to produce T4. Well, what's T4 made out of? Remember I said earlier that the four is iodine. It represents how much iodine? Well, iodine's a, a nutrient. The T is also a nutrient. The T stands for tyrosine, which is an amino acid that you get from eating food. Predominantly tyrosine amino acids come in protein. So um, again, protein, protein-based foods are gonna contain higher quantities of tyrosine. You're gonna need to get iodine. Iodine predominantly in our diets comes from seafood uh, because there's not a whole lot left in the soil due to soil erosion and other factors. So tyrosine and iodine produce your T4. Now, it, it doesn't just, it, it just doesn't, you don't just have tyrosine and iodine and magically they connect. There are other vitamins that help that connection and one of them is vitamin C. So vitamin C and vitamin B2 help combine tyrosine and iodine to form that T4. So, okay, we're, we're halfway through this process. We've already got B12, magnesium, vitamin C, vitamin B2, tyrosine and iodine. That's six nutrients that are already mandatory required for us just to get to this. This is the inactive form of thyroid hormone. So we need six nutrients to get to the inactive form and we haven't even begun with this process yet. So, so again, now we have to convert this T4 into T3 hopefully. And that process, this conversion process, it requires iron, and it requires a mineral called selenium. Okay, uh, selenium runs an enzyme system called a diiodinase enzyme. Diiodinase, if we kind of deconstruct that word, diiodinase means to take away an iodine. That's why it goes from T4 to T3. So that selenium helps in that process. So now we've added two new nutrients, iron and selenium, to get to T3. Now we have an active form of thyroid hormone, but it's still it still has to communicate to your DNA, okay? Thyroid hormone has to communicate to your DNA. It, does, it doesn't just magically improve or speed up your metabolism. So to communicate to the DNA, that requires vitamin D, but it also requires vitamin A. So these two nutrients help to form uh, an antenna on the surface of the nucleus of a cell that bind T3 so that T3 can talk to the DNA. Because when T3 talks to the DNA, what happens now is an increase in your metabolism. And that's why people that don't have enough thyroid have low or slow metabolisms. And they have a tendency, although this isn't always 100% true, some people actually are very thin when they get a diagnosis of low thyroid, but a lot of people can gain weight. So it can go either way. You can, you can actually be very thin, but a lot of people will gain weight because they have a slower metabolism or they will be very slow to heal. They won't grow hair very effectively. Their nails will become thin and brittle. The skin will become thinner and more dry. Their energy will be uh, diminished. They'll have a lot of brain fog or brain fatigue or trouble recalling words. These are symptoms of the metabolism not being up to par or up to speed. And so again, this is what I mean by nutritional low thyroid. We've got B12, we've got magnesium, B, vitamin C, vitamin B2, tyrosine, iodine, iron, selenium, vitamin D, vitamin A, all necessary. We can add another one here and that's omega-3 fatty acids because to drive that metabolism after the fact of thyroid talking to the DNA requires omega-3 fatty acids. So if you don't eat a lot of cold water fish, um, and you're and you're not really into um, it's like if you're vegetarian and you don't eat a lot of meat, it's, it can be very challenging to get adequate quantities of omega-3 fatty acids in the diet. And so again, these nutrients are all necessary to get to what we're trying to do, which is me increase metabolism. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.